The more Walter struggled, the more the ropes seemed to tighten. His neck and shoulders ached. Mosquitoes, black flies, and deer flies swarmed him. He was exhausted, dehydrated. His only relief was to focus on something distant, to escape somewhere far, far from this hell. Sunsets on the beach. Pleasant valleys. Childhood. To escape this hell. Walter tried and tried, but his mind's eye was nothing but a bin of smashed glass, reflecting shattered and rueful decisions. If only he had never met her. Walter! Walter! I told you before, it's Dr. Crampton. We're in public. You rejected my thesis again. How could you? Oh, come on, Barbara. The Netherworld, a study of malevolent spirits and dark entities in Norse mythology. It reads more like Malus Maleficarum. Your thesis is not an academic paper. It's a list of spells. Dr. Crampton, it's real. Hocus pocus, Barbara. No! My father took out a bank loan and I went to Europe. I found the village. I lived with those people for the entire year. I did what you told me to do. Barbara, if I accept this paper, I'll be the laughing stock of the university. What? Where am I? What? No! No, get away! Go! Go! The turkey vultures had found her. Dropping out of the sky like fallen angels, they plopped to the ground about ten meters in front of him. One stabbed its beak at Barbara's corpse. Another fought to gain a space at the feeding trough. But the others chased it away. As the bird hissed and scuttled off, it knocked over a candle. Walter strained against his ropes as he watched the candle flame burn out. I'll show you my thesis is real, Dr. Crampton. If nothing else, I'll prove that to you! When these candles go out, I'll be the one in control! Barbara's last words, as threatening as the blade of a guillotine. Barbara dumped a bag of white powder on the ground, whispered something into the air, and placed the barrel of her gun to the submental space between her chin and throat. Barbara, no! An explosion tore away the crown of Barbara's skull. Her feet lifted and she flew backwards. As she landed, bits of her brain, her torn jaw, and smashed teeth fell around her, and a fine pink cloud of blood mist hung momentarily before settling down upon her lifeless body. Five lit candles in glass jars made a line from Barbara's corpse to the tree. Walter opened his mouth to scream. <coughs> but only a hoarse gurgle issued from his throat, full of raspy spittle and choking death. There was just one candle left, its flame flickering. Again, Walter drifted off into unconsciousness, faded from reality to another time. But you said you loved me. You said we'd be together, Walter. You love me to death. That was what you said on that wonderfully macabre Valentine's Day card. It said, Dear Barbara, I love you to death. With a little cartoon ghosts on it. Listen, Barbara, what we had was nice. But you've been abroad for a year. I've moved on. Now, if you don't mind, I have a lecture to present. Shattered and rueful decisions. When he came to, it was dark nighttime. His lap reeked of urine. The vultures were gone, but he wasn't alone. A pair of yellow eyes moved around the clearing, studying him. 
The yellow eyes moved closer. Walter could hear growling and snarling. Hey! Walter tried to scream, Hey! In the light of the sole remaining candle, Walter could see the dried blood on the wolf's muzzle. The snarling wolf edged closer. Walter noticed another set of yellow eyes and then another. He heard a howl and the first wolf lunged at his face. Turning its head sideways, it latched onto Walter's forehead and made a noise like bah, bah, bah. The animal's teeth pierced his skull, but Walter felt no pain. Another beast ripped into his flank. He closed his eyes, let his body supply the adrenaline to dull the pain and wait for death. That was all that remained. Walter heard a scuffle, a snarl, a yelp, then nothing. It was quiet. The gamey stench of the wolf's breath and the pressure on his forehead suddenly gone. Open your eyes. It was Barbara's voice, but it couldn't be Barbara. No. He grumbled from his raw throat. Yes. Walter tried to keep his eyes closed, but he felt his eyelids being pried open by some invisible, insurmountable force. I don't. Drops of blood dripped from his forehead onto his lap. One, two. Against his will, his eyes popped open. The wolves had toppled over the last candle jar, the flame extinguished, but there was still light in the clearing. Before him, Barbara sat naked, her legs crossed. Her hair was a wild, rippling flame, and her pupils were the color of the sun. Say it. Her voice crackled and popped like a burning log. No. Say it. No. Oh, no. Walter choked, but he could not stop himself. She was controlling him. She was controlling his voice. I love you, Walter said. To death. I know, Barbara responded. Walter could feel the scorching flames of her breath as she leaned to kiss him. He felt his skin bubbling and blistering and he could smell charred meat as his cheeks cooked and his tongue sizzled and his teeth turned molten from the raging heat of her.